Here we are at Halloween Castle. This level is a straightforward platformer and it will trick you just as much as it treats you. The designer created some fun mechanisms, like jump pads that only turn on right as you jump, or a sequence of them that will send you flying across the room. There are plenty of switches to throw and some simple puzzles that we'll get to later on. You can't have a Halloween castle without Dracula, and there he is. I guess he just hides behind the stairs all day. This was one of the most hilarious moments during my playthrough. The sad part is, I basically did the exact same thing both times I ran through the level. After falling to my death, I made it a second time, and just watch. It's embarrassing. Even after I managed to get the switch to work, the jumping mechanics make me fly out onto the candy's lair. There we go, finally. This is my favorite part, the drinking skeletons. They can barely get it in their mouths. What are they drinking, some kind of slimer juice? Then it looks like they're trying to grab you and drag you back to the party. Here's the part of the level that actually made me jump out of my skin. I was not expecting that the first time. Check out this crazy bone elevator. Make sure you jump out before it gets to the top. And look at this jack-o'-lantern. It's huge. Maybe the zombies in the background carved it. Some of the set pieces are pretty cool, while others just aren't memorable. I like how you have to step on this button to get the person to give you candy. It's like they're hooked up to an electrical stun gun, and every time you jump on it, they're forced to shake out more candy for you. Later on, there are some fun platforming segments that go by too quickly. It would have been nice if they were more fleshed out, pun intended. And check out that train. It doesn't really do anything. I thought it was supposed to race it at first, but it just rolls to the end of the level. And there are some ants trying to steal the candy. I don't know what that's about. And then you finally arrived at the party with all your Sackbot friends. This level is a mixed bag, but at least most of it is pretty sweet. I kind of wish I could see the scoreboard, though. If you don't have the time to get out and visit a haunted house this Halloween, Little House of Horrors has you covered. The set pieces mixed with the music are genuinely creepy. Here's some sort of satanic cult, and then there's an adorable teddy bear that spontaneously combusts. I feel bad for this poor zombie that's being electrocuted, or maybe he just really likes the smell of fried brains. My biggest complaint is that this level is way too short, but the level designer gives you a screen to write them a message or make a picture at the end, so that's pretty cool. Here we have LBN Platforming Perils Haunted Halloween. If you only have enough time to play one level, then you can't go wrong with this one. Just listen to the soundtrack. You can't go wrong with Thriller. It sort of has that Ghost and Goblins feel to it, with the tombstones and the zombies popping out of the ground. It's pretty cool. The jumping sections look confusing, but they're fairly straightforward. It won't take you long to figure out where to go. The difficulty curve also jumps around a bit. Those zombie arms in the first section were pretty disorienting, but then this platforming section is basically harmless. I like the use of this sideways camera angle. It works really well for this section. And, of course, it turns out to be a giant skeleton that pukes out flaming pumpkins. What else would it be? The interior of this house feels like a Saturday morning cartoon. Then you hit this switch over on the wall, and the books go crazy. For some reason, this jumping puzzle was really difficult for me. Maybe if the camera was flattened out, it would have been easier. Then you jump down this hole in the floor and enter the sewers. Can you guess what's coming up next? Ghostbusters! They did a great job of recreating the theme, and the ghosts flying up from the River of Slime are great. I like the animation on the hand as well. That must have taken quite a bit of work. There are some great platforming sections here, a simple puzzle or two, a grappling section, and then you're a few bounces away from the finish. This level is just fantastic. It's on par with the main story levels, developed by Media Molecule. Grab a few friends and dive into this spooky cartoon world. You won't regret it. And finally, we have Halloween Coaster. With all of the levels that I had to play, record, edit, and narrate, I didn't think I was going to have time to add this one. I'm really glad I did. This level is incredible. It was made by a Japanese user, so all of the jack-o'-lanterns have adorable winky faces on them. But don't let that fool you. This level is just as scary as it is cute. 
After you hop into your car, you're slowly lifted to the top, and then you're off. There's so much going on here. I had a hard time finding a place to cut the footage because it was all so enjoyable. Then you're transported to a magical underground crystal mine, but the serenity doesn't last long as you're surrounded by darkness and red eyes looming back at you. Just when you think it's over, it picks up again, and you're rewarded with one final outpour of Halloween cheer. Well, that just about wraps up my first Little Big Planet Halloween special. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you have a fun and safe Halloween. Take care, and thanks for watching.